Tom Cole in the meeting order. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazarelli. Here. Tanya. Here. Graziano. Here. Councilmember Ventura will not be with us this evening. Councilmember Robel. Here. Jim Burke. Here. Mayor Melman. Yes, here. Uh, do I have a packet? I'm trying. I can pull it up online if I have. No, we have uh, the next one. Sunshine. Pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was published in the Thursday, July 7th editions of the Double Times in Star Ledger. A copy of the annual meeting notice has been posted on the Double Town Hall Bulletin Board, and copies are on file in the Municipal Clerk's Office. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, everybody, I'd like to welcome you to our first meeting in October. First meetings of the month are always our combined conference regular meeting. With that being said, council members, members of the administration have the ability to put any topics they want on for discussion. And uh, I just want to advise the audience that's here, as you already know by now, that you can listen to us deliberate. It's a little unique because you're watching us have conversation. Uh, there is no public participation portion at this part of the meeting. But if you do hear something that interests you, you more than willing can speak about it during public commenting later on. Uh, so that being said, I have a couple different topics. I'm going to go pretty quick. Um, my first type of topic on is the meter discussion. So we have seen, uh, I don't want to say new meters on Washington Avenue. I want to say meter heads on Washington Avenue. So I'd like to get an update from the manager on that project and then just to see what the future holds. Are we going to get the full meter? Are we going to get the app eventually? Or um, I'm kind of little discouraged because I, I, I know we made a considerable investment and it, it just seems like every time we invest in technology and or hardware we just do it to do it and we don't get the full effect of it. Uh, we saw that I think with GovPilot and I think we see it now where we don't have the app, we don't have the stands, we don't have some of the other things. I'm just hoping that's all coming. So the app is in place uh, minus the actual stickers that go on. So Nobody now, knows to download the app. That is correct. So, but they have been ordered. Uh, they were ordered day one. Problem is, it's just a little bit of a backlog. So it's a sticker on the head itself. Plus is signs. It, is plus it going to be on the signs? Plus signs. Plus signs. Okay. We so also that, ordered some signs too. Perfect. So that takes care of that issue. Um, now I've seen meters with no heads on them, and, and I've reported them to the chief. Yeah. So they're being repaired, Mayor. Um, the problem is the old housings matching with the new heads. We are ordering new housings we, also. We were initially under the impression that the, the existing pole yeah. and the existing housing would, would just work correctly. And, and it does. It does work for, for some, some, mostly. But for, you can pull it off without the correct housing. When so they were installing them, I saw them installing them, and you could easily get a key or screwdriver sure. driver in there, and even though there's no money necessarily, I could foresee people trying to steal it, thinking that there is. So I don't know if the decision was right. I don't know if the decision was to, to save a little money because, again, if you're going to make the investment, make the investment correctly. Mm -hmm. So we are now replacing. And the I believe what held us off was the streetscape. We thought that was coming sooner rather than later, and we just figured let's just start slow. So they're going to rip the sidewalks up anyway. So the bottom of the meter we're going to get next. Cause that's a, we're that's a, new that's housing. A it matches better. With it. it fits like a glove. Like you have to say, you're getting a 2022 head. Putting around 1940 housing, right. it's not going to be exact. So, does a pole stay? Is that the existing? The pole. We're going to get new poles when they're done with the streetscape. There's no sense buying new poles and going to rip them out of the concrete. Okay. But the streetscape does not include sidewalks. In, again, they, in we were told that we're spots, spots, maybe. So, spots, maybe. So, so we painted yeah, the exact yeah, Zoom meeting last week. We, yeah, but right out front, it is going to include the mayor. Yeah, some spots. So some spots maybe are going to be wide. Twenty-five percent of them are going to. Yeah. And there's going to be big equipment. Like the rain garden. And that's yeah, the rain well, garden. But it doesn't matter. We're going to order the housing. We can take them off before they do any construction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else on this topic? No, I'm good with that. Next item is, uh, again, multiple conversation with the chief about this. Uh, crosswalks and yellow painted curbs. Um, I, did, I did want to jump on the topic of the meters. Sure. So I'm just just question. So when they go red, that means they're empty and cars in there should be ticketed. If they're in violation, yeah. yeah. Okay. Blinks. Does it blink red? Uh, yeah. Okay. So does that does it does it notify us when they go red? Yes. The app 
who's supposed to notify you. So is that set up? I believe so. I believe it is. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to okay. say but, but I know we're going to have so the cap capability of doing Okay, so once we start getting that red light yes. and app working, yes. we'll be able to go out and ticket. Yes. Not. Okay, good. Would that be a police officer or would that be a ticket meter person? We have a meter person, but... They're, they're 9 to 5, they're the same hours as the parking hours for the most part? For Close the enough. most part, not exactly. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So just so I know, a, a, a police officer driving down Washington Avenue... They can. They, should, they can, but they don't, it's not... It's not well, they're they're going to patrol they, right we, by the... We, we, we pay so much salary to do that. Right. Like, uh, okay, yeah. that's what I'm saying. They can, we got to complain, they're not there, they do it. Right. Okay. Just, like, just like street cleaning. Yep. All right, uh, crosswalking up into curbs. There's a specific area close uh, in the fourth ward. Uh, houses real close together. I've driven on numerous occasions there with the chief, actually, uh, whether that's Floyd, um, Beginning Malone, to... all those blocks right there. Uh, there seem to constantly be cars on top of the corner. I've seen cars parked diagonal on the round part of the corner. And... Uh, you know, I know from a police perspective, the police know the law. The law is X amount of feet from the corner, so they feel that people should know that. Uh, but then I've driven with the chief, and I've showed him where we have Belgian block that are painted yellow, uh, and the people do kind of less violations. They, they sure. kind of do. I think they just need to see the yellow yeah. of it, and they think that if it's not yellow, they can kind of sneak and put it there, and they're not getting tickets. So. Uh, but I do think that we really need to aggressively paint curves. We used to do that with the summer. I'm told through a, a birdie, I have a little birdie as well, you know, in this building. You sure you have one of one? I have a couple of birdies. <laughs> uh, I'm told that we may have a machine now that paints. Just got it. That's what I'm saying. Wow. It's all we started today. Yes. But things are in motion. So a machine that paints, that's going to be good with curves and crosswalks. And we also do crosswalks. We have to bring the line company for that. Crosswalks, I like bringing the company in, but... Can our machine? It depends who operates the machine. Who's operating the machine? Exactly. Well, I like the fact we used to paint the weeds, but on the I'm curves. Not, I don't want to say it. <laughs> no, it's not say politically that. correct. I'm right now, so that. I won't. But again, it depends who's operating that machine. Uh, okay. That, that now, again, I, I, not, not to, not to. <laughs> but we're gonna actually. Because we bought equipment before, and we've we've stored it somewhere. We're gonna learn how to use it. We're gonna I train somebody. I actually else. witnessed the, the instructional. Session myself. I witnessed the people. So you can paint the curves. No, I said I witnessed them. I witnessed them taking the instructional course. All right, so we can be rest assured that we're going to paint the whole town yellow and white. Yellow curves, white cross. We are beginning with a certain area that yeah. is, it requires immediate attention. Mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor again. Conversation. So as far as the yellow curves, once they're painted, they're going to be ticketed if people are on. Absolutely. Okay. The crosswalks, I was one of my topics I want to talk about, a jump on your coattails. Uh, crosswalks for safety around schools. I see it around in other schools, I'm not saying to, to guard them, but if we put crosswalks on around the school areas, every school, and I see they have the solar stop signs that are really just around the areas, have we thought about something like that? To where, so it's, especially around the school, school, right, especially around the school, where you have them and the kids are always crossing and and you may not you, you know you may not have a guard there which is fine or you may fine but oh, we have even, a guard at every school right but I'm saying at crosswalks around the school like the cross intersections so if you go up uh, take take the Avenue mm -hmm. uh, but take number seven school okay. you have them on all the surrounding around there right you have to Avenue you have division you have Allen yeah. there go go Greylock Knowlton Belmore boom Adelaide, right? And then, like, all of those is my point, and especially around, like, number four school and number three school, where you have the crosswalks. I'm just saying crosswalks should be four ways, not just two ways, around schools, if I said that. Um, no. Yeah, but you can't That's cross. You can't no. cross the no. division. No, that is, that is wrong. So we can't do that? No. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You have to have a specified corner for that, and they are already your more. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You can't. You can't cross. I, I know that. Yeah. A lot question. of people like again. They think there's one on uh, Geraldman by Dewitt, and there's not. Well, no. I try tied doing away with it, but the parents and the kids just make their own. They don't listen to the guard, but that doesn't mean it's going to be there because they're doing it. Like it doesn't belong there. It's too close to the next nearest one, and it creates another hazard. So you can't just nilly willy put crosswalks. Okay. Okay. All right.
Anybody else? No? Uh, last topic for me is, uh, I know we've had some conversation about the ATVs and dirt bikes uh, crossing over. Uh, a lot of times they do cross over from North Broadway uh, into Belleville, uh, but we also have our share of dirt bikes and ATVs. Uh, I've been noticing, I know I sent you, Chief, uh, uh, some articles about Patterson's mayor. Uh, they've cracked down heavily on that. Uh, and just so the public knows, even though we can't go back and forth in conversation, uh, this is not, unfortunately, it's not really a law enforcement issue. Um, sadly, our police officers in a patrol car cannot uh, attempt to stop a dirt bike or an ATV because they're not uh, a licensed motor vehicle with the plate and all that stuff. Uh, so it's not a motor vehicle infraction. Therefore, in the current modern world, especially in New Jersey, that we live in, where police are regularly handcuffed, um, they're powerless to do anything. So much so that if, if, if they see somebody on a dirt bike or a quad that's terrorizing traffic, by the way, the town attorney witnessed it, town manager witnessed it, not 15 minutes ago on Washington Avenue, we had multiple ATVs uh, zipping around traffic. Uh, if our police officers hit the lights and that ATV takes off and crashes, the police officer in the department can be held liable. Uh, that's the, in the township. Uh, that's the state that we live in, uh, literally the state that we live in, unfortunately. So we're, we are kind of handcuffed, but there are mayors uh, 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 that, that are doing something about it. Uh, Patterson mayor, they are. They, they have the ability to confiscate. Uh, I'm assuming that's when they're not in motion. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how they're doing that. I, 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 I will call Andre and ask him how they're doing that, but he's been in two articles already about how many vehicles they've confiscated. And I think once the message gets out uh, that we don't tolerate it, I think it'll subside here in Belleville. Um, I did I get any of that wrong, Chief? Pardon? Did I get any of that wrong? Well, other than saying you, want to add you can't attempt to stop, you can, but if it initiates a pursuit, then you're in trouble. Right, so if they just don't stop, you can't really do much about it. You have to stop, yeah. For a motor vehicle, okay, I, mean, I could get into the whole chase policy, right. but there's an enumerated crime that was committed on the ATV, then you could... Right. But if you're just joyriding with no helmet... Shot the clerk in the bank and on the way out sexually assaulted someone and hopped on their ATV right. and shot at the cops on the way, then you could. We have to do <laughs> calculus and trigonometry <laughs> just to know yeah. we can turn our lights on. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask Mayor Andre how they're handling that, uh, and I'll just forward you some information. Sure. If we could do an ordinance, or would that be an ordinance, or you guys already have police powers to, what would you need from us? Again, for motor vehicle offenses, we don't need anything, but if you want to uh, enhance it or augment a law with an ordinance, uh, I mean... I know Camden did something. I know a lot of the inner cities yeah, have I'm sure it's more stuff. symbolic, Mayor. I mean, right. you know, again, it doesn't... The town ordinance is not going to supersede these uh, AG guidelines on uh, pursuits. Yeah, these, these, these towns are doing it somehow. But we'll, all right, we'll find out how. There's a, a, I heard, Chief, that uh, towns were also banning gas stations from filling up yeah. ATVs. Yeah, that's, that's part of the uh, that's fine. That's is, yeah. I mean, look, if you come in the trailer in the back of your car, fine, fill it up. But if you drive into a gas station, the five hundred dollar fine. It's five hundred dollars for the for the gas station. We got to do it just like the e-cigarettes, just like all that. Doing that anyway. I don't think we're supposed to be. Well, well, you could do an ordinance and another thing. Yeah, yeah, and then we can. Yeah, I don't know. It's a law. How to do it? Okay. Well, I think they said by yeah, we have two things to yeah. track down. Uh, next item is the Deputy Mayor Graziano. He's got various items for discussion. I said. Yes. So I'm going to start off with uh, Anthony. He's pretty much our to you. So um, the high school security, the grounds. Are we making any headway with that? Yeah. So we, you know, we're trying to do it the best that we can with uh, a few bodies. We're also meeting with uh, Dr. Tonko this week, and that's one of the items that we're going to review. Okay. Uh, this has been an ongoing problem. Uh, water, the, the water, uh, water update of fairway with the previous rains. I know we had discussion about this about the pumps and stuff. Uh, and anything to alleviate? Have we put any efforts into looking at that again and or putting it in a budget? So the last time we spoke about it um, somewhat holistically in general, we were going to hire a engineering company to do a review. I believe that's the way I remember the last time. We, we even accepted bids. We did mm -hmm. accept bids. So to, but to the best of my knowledge, we never uh, awarded past that to any engineers that submitted that. So, Kelly, perhaps me and you could take a look at who submitted, mm -hmm. and we'll pass that out to the council.
council and maybe we'll even have something ready for the next meeting. Great. Because again, we don't want to go out and spend X, I don't know what X was, but it was a couple hundred thousand maybe or a hundred thousand on a pump without knowing for sure that that pump was going to correct the problem. Mm -hmm. um, tractor trailers, dump trucks, what are, when all our new streets get paid, looking nice, and uh, I've seen tractor trailers, Greylock Parkway, and other locations, and they're actually hitting the trees. Uh, I believe we have an ordinance in place right on weight and stuff like that. And if we do, or if, if it's a, if it's a two ton, if it's a street, a truck, no truck street. So yeah, like so like, like so some so streets have them. Uh, yeah. So how would we like if like me, if I seen that happen? Pardon? Twenty years ago, we dealt with Bayard Street with that. Yeah, I mean, some have them, some Okay, so is, that, is it up to us to call and, like, if you see something, call and how does that work? We, we, we really should check with our township engineer. I mean, some okay. the traffic study because some trucks have, unfortunately, no alternative but to go down a certain street. No, I, they have a delivery on that street, maybe perhaps. You yeah, know, and I know we're, we're trying to beautify it now. We've dealt with this on Bauman Avenue. We've been dealing with this for years on Bauman. Okay. Like, the, sometimes that's the only way they can go to deliver to the super fresh. They have to, it's on Belmont Avenue. <laughs> like, you know, that's, you can't make an impossible ordinance and make it impossible for the truck to get there. Yeah, just thinking out because if it is, if they are going to... Oh, it's fine. You pay it, it helps save the... And, 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 if they, and not only that, they hit the trees. If the trees are not trimmed, then it affects something else. So, yeah. I'm just... Well, make a list and we'll let the engineer take a look at it. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would suggest you. Let's see here. Um, the signs. Uh, as we know, and, and Anthony has been working on it with DPW, uh, the signs on Greylock Parkway that I've been getting. We put a sign up, street signs, get knocked down. Right? We know that we're working on that. But uh, with the past garage sale that we had, right, I still see, it's Tuesday, and I still see signs up that people put up in a roll hour. Is there, is that anybody particular uh, job that would actually make sure those signs are off? So we had, we had the, uh, the garage sale on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, um, again, um, we were off on Monday, which oh, today right. is the first day. Okay. Um, and again, I'm, Bobby's not here, but we really do put a concentrated effort, especially the junk cars, cars for sale. We go up with, but they go up with a very high ladder. We go up with a bucket truck to get them down. So, with the exception of Monday us being a holiday, and um, I forgot about that because I worked on Monday. It's uh, <laughs> gotta come to work with Tom. Um, but it's a uh, it's, it's a assignment that we normally don't even have to ask them to do. They're pretty good at it now. Okay, and two more. Uh, I know we have a program, it's been to, I, I believe, uh, we always talk about it, and that's the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of money in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know, I, I don't know the right numbers of who applied and how many applied to this date, but I know, I don't think it's being used, you know what I mean? So is there any way that we could think out of the box, and I know there's regulations around this, can you reach out to whomever, I, I guess it's CNA, I don't know who put it together. CMEs are administrators. Right, so is your, is, can we look at something like this to see I've, if that I've, be I've asked this question, the answer's been no, but maybe we have to ask differently, or it can only be used for to repair houses. Is that the question? Yeah, yeah, it, exactly. I, I asked, can we use it for facades? Can we use it for, we'll ask again a different way, maybe we'll get a different answer. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, it's, it's money, it's there, it's, it's not the taxpayer's money, it's there, it, it, it could help everybody. So we can look at that. Can we get a report from C where it's actually we being used? Yeah, yeah. Tom, Tom. yeah, I haven't gotten in a while. Though. I'll make sure we get one. Like a year or something. Yeah. 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 And then the last thing. Uh, I see a lot, and I know we were catching up, Chief, and this had to do with the uh, handicap signs. Handic uh, you know, handicap signs. Sure. Last month, last meeting, we had a lot because we didn't do them the past. Yes. Right? And yes. now I see on this month there's a lot more. But then I also hear when people come in, they complain about, you know, we have no parking on the streets and stuff like that. Is there anything that we can put in place, if you didn't already or don't, or you have, I don't know, asking, to where we can check up on these yearly and see if they're valid, not valid? They do. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes. So I they, thought the, um, again, I apologize. I thought the complaint you were talking about is that there was so much stuff at one time. You might not. No. Because I drive yeah, around. That was my I, complaint. I can, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Then. Like I, I, that's been addressed. Okay, so I can tell you, um, you can drive around and you see people in drive, and I know there's except I know there's rules, and there's you see driveways. Supposed and to be they, it was ever the closest from point A to point B. Uh, and I and I know over the years it there's a gray area, I believe I'll, I'll call it that way. Uh, but 
you have call people that have a gray area. Right. And if there's call it a political gray area. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And if there and if there's <laughs> rules if there's rules and guidelines around it, maybe on the review we enforce them regardless. That's my personal opinion. Enforce them right now. Issue them. Yeah, and or taking them if they don't really. Oh no, we them. take we take okay. them away when there's someone. Which will free up parking space when you start counting them up and looking throughout the town. There's a lot. And if I may, give my opinion. There's too many handicap parks. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. I don't want to it. Okay, so we're going to move right on to the report of the manager. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, so uh, I'm sure you either read or heard. Uh, saw on the news there was a 72-inch uh, uh, water main break, which could have been a uh, very detrimental impact on our community. We were extremely lucky because uh, both Nutley, Bloomfield, and Montclair air. 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 Yes, but is it high? Let there be. Yeah. All, all, <laughs> all, all <laughs> experienced uh, water boil cool? advisories, yeah. low water pressure, uh, water discoloration, all the above. We had some, uh, and our water department and our engineering department uh, were working very close with Newark, Montclair, Bloomfield, complete communication. We had to divert some of the uh, water lines. The hospital, during this whole uh, four or five days, maintained the proper water pressure, so that was important. And the reason why I say that, not only to say that we were very lucky, that we only experienced some low water pressure in the surrounding neighborhoods. But because we do have a schedule now for uh, the hydro flushing, and it's important to uh, residents understand that this is not only a requirement from the DEP, but by us flushing the hydrants, it improves the quality of the water, and it certainly helps with water breaks and things of that nature because it maintains the, the correct water pressure. So we have our schedule, which we post on the website. That's between today and Thursday, and um, we. we most of those streets. So some people do may experience, like tonight, may experience um, low water pressure or wake up tomorrow morning, see some brown water, you just, you know, again, run the water for five minutes and it should be fine. Uh, Public Works has been extremely busy. Uh, we still have about a month left on leave pickup, which is a, you know, primary responsibility this time of the year. And also, you know, we're going to maintain the street sweeper being out there as long as we can. We never pick an exact date. Uh, because it's, it's weather uh, dictated. So if uh, we get a mild fall and winter, we'll have the sweeper out there until we, uh, the temperatures drop below freezing. And we continue with our um, maintenance schedule for cleaning out the catch basins. That helps when we get the heavy rains. Through, through the chair, just a real quick question, Mike, sure. to the manager. With, with all this banging and everything that PSE&G is doing over the course of the last couple of years, I mean, we've been experiencing, to me, an inordinate amount of these breaks. I mean, are they responsible at, at any point in time or not? You know? I don't want to speak for PSE. Yeah, I would, I would assume they're not going to take responsibility for any, any break, crack, or, or sorry, repair. But uh, we have been working closely with them uh, because, as you know, we're about to uh, start our 17th Street repaving program, and we want to coordinate with them. They really, uh, with the exception of Little Street, they really don't have much work plan for the fall. Uh, unexpected, you know, uh, makes an emergency a difference, but so we're trying to coordinate that. I think that's about it, certainly it's available for any questions. Anybody else for the manager? Just, just one other quick question. Sure. Kelly, I know you said that we were able to get that bill list published. Yes. Yeah. So the bill list got published, right? It's on the same web, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else for the manager? So, next item in the agenda is the report of the mayor. So we have the, uh, as always, I like to just kind of touch base with some past events, some upcoming events, and some news. Uh, before I do so, I know that uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, for the last couple of years, has always wanted us to uh, wear pink uh, in October. So we're going to make the announcement. We're going to do that next next meeting. Everybody, council, yeah, got it. Everybody's good. Pink administration manager. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to wear pink next. Uh, two weeks from today. So past events, uh, this past Saturday and Sunday we had a town-wide garage sales. Uh, we probably had north of 175 people participate. The overwhelming majority of the people did opt back in for the second week. Uh, I took the opportunity. I know uh, the police department made their rounds. I know the fire department made their rounds, uh, stopping in from different um, 
garage sales, and it just seemed like it was a great event. It seemed perfect, even though it wasn't the original date, uh, but it did seem perfect. Uh, it coincided with the uh, food truck festival that was at the new venue. I have to say, uh, I did love the, the prior venue because I thought it was all enclosed in and tucked in nicely. Um, I have to say that I, I, I did enjoy uh, the new venue being at the high school. I thought it, it worked out well. And I think that a lot more people showed up. We probably had maybe 2,000 people in and out over the course of eight hours. The uh, weather was a little chilly, but it, it worked out well. While the sun was out, it was fine. It was even tolerable when the sun went down, even though it was a little bit on the chilly side. But again, I'm really looking forward to next year. That's going to be an annual thing. It's usually the second Saturday. It's been Friday in the past, but it's uh, usually around the first week or so in October. So we're looking forward to doing that again. Uh, and the next day, it was a busy weekend, but the very next day, we had uh, an early morning for some of us. Uh, we were here at 9 o'clock in the morning at Town Hall for the Italian flag raising. And then uh, some of us participated in the Columbus Day Parade with our friends and colleagues over on the other side of the border in Nutley. Uh, it was great to see them. Uh, I have to say, and uh, this is probably my fifth year, I think, and uh, Deputy Mayor and Vinny correct me, but I do think that this was the highest level of participation of families sitting outside on the on the Drolima Street to Franklin Avenue. Uh, usually we get we don't get much of a turnout, but we, we had people strewn about everywhere it seemed. Uh, we handed out some candy, it was uh, it was good. Uh, so upcoming events. Uh, this coming Thursday, Chief, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, safe talk. October 13th, what day is that? Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, this coming Wednesday, tomorrow. Thursday. Thursday. Sorry. Sorry. Thursday. So Thursday we have the uh, Police Department Community Safety Talk. Uh, it's 11 o'clock at Fusement Church. I'm sending Karen to crash that because we've been unable. How you contacted anybody in Fusement Church, we don't know because we have emailed, we have called. We've sent carrier pigeons. They do not return calls. They do not return emails. We have to get a hold of them to ask them a question, and I'm sending Karen to crash on Thursday. Uh, I'm assuming that then, uh, I'm assuming the 14th is then going to be Friday. Uh, we have our fire department getting involved. They're doing the fire safety event. That's always a great event for kids. They get to work with fire hoses. They get to see the jaws of life. They get to see all the toys that the uh, fire department has. Uh, that's going to be Friday evening from 6 to 8. October 22nd is our next big township event. That is our Halloween Spectacular. It's going to be at Bevel High School. It seems to be the location, the venue where most of our town events are taking place these days. Uh, so Saturday, October 26th from 11 to 2. Uh, that's going to be uh, another great event. We've been doing a great job. That's actually a busy day as well. I think there's some other community events that day. Uh, and then always keep in mind, Sunday, November 13th, we have our 5K race in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning. We already have a bunch of registrations. Looking to break a record for that. And then I believe at either 11 or 12 o'clock is the Veterans Day Parade. Uh, it's the last parade that's, that's Bevel's Parade. It's the last parade that we do. Uh, we don't do many other parades in Bevel, so that's the last one. So we'd like to have people participate. Lastly, just some news. Today, right before this council meeting, we had the pleasure of swearing in a whole bunch of firemen, uh, two deputy chiefs, and a bunch of officers. Uh, we had a very special guest. Uh, nice to see guys retire and return. Deputy Chief Frank Papiani was here. And uh, it was great to have that swearing in uh, eight or seven months in the making, I think, manager. These guys have already been in the, in the jobs for that long. They actually long. graduated the academy a year ago. Uh, so we got them in. Uh, we got them in. We got them sworn in. They're now, uh, they're now official. Uh, last week I met with the uh, uh, AARP to discuss the Pocket Park and Division of Princeton Terrace. Uh, Township Council, I think that might be in two weeks. Township Council is going to have our first ABC hearing in nearly... 12, 15, 17 years or so. Uh, so that's good, especially with some of the new, new developments happening, some of the new restaurants, some of the new bars you see. Uh, we're, we're unlike most, uh, we don't have regular ABC meetings. Uh, I do own a liquor license, therefore I do not preside or take, take part in that. Uh, Deputy Mayor will be the chair. That's going to be in two weeks, Kelly? Yes. Uh, that's going to be in two weeks. I believe it's scheduled for 5 o'clock. Correct. And um, yeah, so that's, that's going to be interesting. I believe there's two violations that the uh, council which serves as the ABC board are going to be dealing with. Manager mentioned hydrant flushing uh, tomorrow through the 13th, which means I will get emails from people talking about dirty water and brown water. As the manager said, just keep running. Uh, anchor program. 
Uh, I, I was suspicious about this program a couple of weeks ago, a couple months ago. Anchor program is legit. It, it replaces the homestead rebate. It is real money. Uh, you will get a $1,500 check, a $1,000 check, or a $450 check if you're a tenant. It's not just for homeowners. If you're a tenant within the income guidelines, and you know what, for New Jersey standards, the in income guidelines are reasonable. Uh, if you make $150,000 or less, you qualify. If you make $150,000 to $250,000, you still qualify. Uh, so that's something that's unique. I encourage all residents to make sure you apply for that. Uh, next, Belleville has a Starbucks. Belleville has a much better Starbucks than Nutley, by the way. It's got a drive through it's got outdoor space. The Nutley guys, uh, when we saw them this coming Sunday at the Columbus Day Parade, uh, we're laughing about my comment about that, but uh, hey, it is what it is. Belleville's got a better Starbucks. Uh, make sure you sign up for Nixle, brand new reverse 911 system. Track according to the manager is basically open. We just haven't formally uh, busted a bottle of champagne over it, I guess. Uh, but that's going to come in due time. The, it is open. You will not get kicked off unless you're there after dark or you're uh, riding a bike on it or you're walking a dog on it or you're doing everything else that I've seen people do on it. Uh, then you will get kicked off, hopefully. Uh, speaking of the municipal tracks, uh, municipal stadium complex, the pickleball court is under development, uh, making good progress there. Great program is always out of our library. And lastly, Chief, the community guarding groundhog remains at large. He keeps giving you guys the slip. Uh, that's it for me. Next up, this is the first meeting of the month, so it's committee reports. Uh, if anybody hasn't discussed anything they want, we have ad hoc committees here in this township. So any council member that wants to jump into a specific topic or a specific uh, panel or an idea can do so. I always start with Deputy Mayor. Deputy Mayor, anything else to add? Uh, no, not at the time. No? Councilman Burke? Councilman Depenia? Nothing at the time. Uh, we have here Councilman Cazzarella. Mm -hmm. Councilman Rebel. I'm good. Okay. Approval of minutes. Uh, combined conference and regular meeting of January 11th and regular meeting of January 25th. Make a motion. Second. We have a motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazzarelli. Yes. Pena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Pearl Bell? Yes. Jim Wilbur? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. I'll ask. Next. B? Communications. A oh, no, that was just one we did or we moved the ball? We moved the ball. Oh, moved the ball. Is that correct, Kelly? Is it 2021 and 2022? Oh, no. Yes, I'm sorry. That's typo. Eagle Eye of the former teacher, <laughs> Councilman <laughs> DePena, yes, snag that one. It is 2022. I apologize. It is an Eagle Eye. All right, we stand corrected. We approve minutes from 2022 and 2022. Communications. A request received from the residents of Division Avenue for permission to conduct a block party on Saturday. October 22nd from 6 to 11. And the request received from the residents of Acme Street for permission to conduct the block party on Saturday, October 29th from 6 to 12 a.m. So we're not ignoring these requests. Uh, these come in as communications. They get sent to the police department. 12 o'clock, I don't know if that's normal, but uh, the police department will handle any, any, uh, anything with that. Okay, next item on the agenda is ordinances. Ordinances for introduction. Ordinance number one, an ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances of the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8-2.2, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets. We a motion to move for introduction. Second. We have a motion made and second to move for introduction. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Pena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strubelberg? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Ordinance number two. An ordinance will amend ordinance number 3634, creating permanent positions and adopting reclassification compensation plans. Motion to introduce. Second. We have a motion made and second to introduce. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Depenia? Yes. Fraziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strubelo Burke? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Ordinances for public hearing, second and final reading. Ordinance number one for public hearing and ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances of the Township of Bevel. Chapter 8-16, Handicap Parking Spaces. Mm -hmm. Take a motion for public hearing. Second. We have a motion made and second for public hearing. Clerk, call roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Pena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Tim Wilbur? Yes. Mayor Melton? Yes. We are open for public hearing on this ordinance and this ordinance only. If you have a question about this ordinance, please stand up. State your name and address for the record. Hearing none? Okay. So Frank, can I tell you? Just make sure that microphone is on, sir. Yeah, are we just adding more handicapped space with this ordinance? What are we doing? That's it. Yes. So 
So it says, usually it says deleting or adding. No, it says adding. Adding. I, I hope the chief's correct because I believe you did pass an ordinance years ago. Every year they check and you have to reapply to see if they're legitimate on there. That's what the chief uh, said. But you, some of these things um, are really getting out of hand. The other thing is, we go to Bloomfield and other towns, they stripe the whole thing in blue on the street and all. My neighbor across the street, I don't know if chief's aware of individual ones, in the last two months the police have been called three times because people park and you got to sign up, but it's at the tail end of the parking space. So people come, and again, because of the illegal parking zone retreat, we've got dozens of cars there. They just park in the guy's parking space. He comes home, he can't get, he just had a stroke. He, he's a legitimate handicapped guy, but they can't see it. The streets are marked. Go look at Bluefield. Blue lines front and back, and other towns have the whole square blue, so it's very obvious to people. So maybe we can do that to stop these people from parking in these handicapped spaces. Thank you. Any, anybody else for this, this order this order is only? I'll obtain a motion to close, move for final adoption. So moved. Second. A motion made and second to close, move for final adoption. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli. Yes. Penny? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Trimelo Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance number two for public hearing and ordinance to amend, revise, and supplement the Township Code of the Township of Belleville, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, Chapter 2, entitled Administration, Part 2, entitled Personnel, most notably Section 12-19.6, entitled Supplemental Compensation Payments. We need a motion to introduce public hearing? Motion. Second. Motion made and second to introduce for public hearing. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli. Yes. Penny? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Trimble Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Anybody else? Anybody for this order? This order is only for public hearing. Mr. Fernandez? Well, I have uh, section 2-19.6. So hopefully you folks who are going to vote on this tonight, can you tell me what you're doing with this ordinance? Sure, this is a, a result of the Attorney General's, uh, I'm sorry, this is the State uh, Controller's audit report. We then hired a company to review it, and the town attorney can speak more intelligently on it. Yeah, sure. um, this is part of, as a result of the Controller's report, there were some corrective actions that needed to be, be taken. Um, Township hired a law firm to do those corrective actions. This is one of the corrective actions. This, this accomplishes one of the corrective actions that are necessary in order to comply with the comptroller's report regarding vac vacation and sick time. Okay. Can we can we just say what that is? The corrective action. Yes. So um, it, it limits it limits to the amount uh, to fifteen thousand dollars of to, for payouts of, sick, of unused sick time, All right. which was not the or ordinance previously. Again, I fought to get that when I was in office. The problem, the other four elected officials were government employees and then we go but why aren't we going to 12,000 which is the state cap which I tried to do to follow the state the state has a $12,000 cap because the the, the comptroller's report what the comptroller's report recommended is what we are doing that's why so you tell me the controller recommended 15,000 no that's the law that's the law 15,000 not 12,000 15000 There's a law that specifies to this. Are you aware that the state has a $12,000 cap? I don't know what the state has. I'm talking about municipalities. We're a municipality. We're not the state. So we're, the state law is $15,000, which is why we are changing it in accordance with the comptroller's report. All right. Uh, is that for all employees, or is there a time of hire? Time of hire, May 21, 2010, when the law changed. So for every employee hired after May 21st, 2010. After 2010. May 21st, 2010. So the maximum they can get under any circumstances is 15. Correct, before deductions. So, so the employee is actually lowered. Right. Is there any other changes in that uh, ordinance? In that section? Uh, yeah, the, the, that talks about, that's vacation, and then there's the sick time, which uh, the, um, and it has to be done at retirement. So you can't take it mid-year. You can't take it every year. 
it has to be done at retirement so that people don't take advantage of it. So it has to be done at Only retirement. Only done at retirement. Yes. And that's clear in the wording. Absolutely. That would be clear. Cause that's it's, been in, a, it's in the new ordinance. That's been abused in the and, past also. And it, correct. And it wasn't, it was not in the, the old ordinance. It's in the new ordinance. Now, again, as a result of uh, the, the minor infractions Belleville had in that report. Okay. Well, I'm glad to see the changes if we enforce them. Thank you. Anybody else for this ordinance? This ordinance only, Mr. Sheldon. Good evening, Michael Sheldon, 47 Flight Street. Uh, I want to thank you for clarifying, answering some of the questions I was going to ask. But I, I have a copy of the controller's report here, uh, just for everyone's edification, council members, those in the audience, those watching. Uh, I want to read this section. What does the law say? And it says, all employees hired after May 10th, May of 2010, can receive more than $15,000 for their unused sick leave. Employees can only receive that $15,000 at retirement, which Mr. Martino acknowledged, not when they resign, change jobs, or as an annual payout. Number three, employees can't carry over more than a year's worth of vacation time. And four, in addition, after 2007, certain senior local government employees cannot receive more than $15,000 for their unused sick leave. So I assume all of these matters now are up to speed and will be enforced from this point on. But the question I had is obviously the controller um, identified Belleville among 60 other communities in New Jersey that were in violation of this law. So clearly at least a few Belleville employees got away with these violations, will any effort be made now to recapture monies that were, in all, all reason, were illegally paid to these employees? So I'd like to know, you know what, if any, effort is going to be made in order to help local taxpayers who were effectively victimized by the law not being abided, what's going to be done to, to recoup all of these losses? Could you? Please answer that question. Mayor and Council, to the best of my knowledge, um, the four years that I've been here, we have not uh, paid anybody illegally or, or um, whatever, uh, as far as anything that was paid was based on contractual obligation, and uh, we are not in violation of the Comptroller's report. Well, that's good to know that in the last few years, we're not in violation, but this pertains to every employee hired after May 2010. Those prior are, are grandfathered in. But what about those who took advantage of these loopholes before you became town manager? Is any effort going to be made to identify those who received monies from May 10th, May 2010 until Mr. Iacono assumed the role of town manager? I would, I would certainly defer to uh, council, but I think that we would probably spend more money on legal fees. Than so, yeah, I think Mr. Martin makes a good point. Um, we're not necessarily sure we were in any violet, uh, it, that we, we illegally or incorrectly paid anybody out. It's just we didn't have the wording in our ordinance. Now we have the wording in our ordinance. The violation was about not having the, the wording in the ordinance, not about improperly paying somebody. That's right. It certainly seems based on the wording of the controller's report, that his office did find illegal payments made to more than a handful of Belleville employees. Uh, can you cite that in the... I have an Oprah request in to his office to get the actual... You just said that he said it, so you must, you must no, know in, it in, in the report. In, in the report, well, I... I, I you you clearly just said that the Attorney General said that Belleville paid people incorrectly. His, his report indicated that a number of communities, 60 communities that he identified... Were in violation, include, which means we did right. not have the ordinance in place. And Where and does it say that we in, paid in somebody report, legally? He said two, two, two things that Belleville was in violation of, that they were paying more than 15000 Belleville had paid more than $15,000. He didn't indicate the number of employees on his website, but he said that Belleville had two violations, paying more than $15,000 and paying it outside of retirement. So he clearly has has your records. His Township attorney says it's not what the report says, and you don't have a report, so there's no point. I in have the report here, but it's it, it, the graphic. There's a graphic, and obviously when you try to print a graphic, graphics don't usually image. 
but on, on this, I'll, I'll post this link on my Facebook page and send it to you as well, but there is, on his, on the, on his page where he posts this report, he has an interactive map for the 60 communities, and if you click on the Belleville icon, he indicates that Belleville paid more than $15,000 and paid it outside of retirement, but he doesn't indicate on that page the, the details. That's why I've, I've sent an Oprah in asking him to give me all the nitty gritty fine grain okay, details. Okay, I guess we'll hear about it next meeting. Well, as, as soon as I do fine, but I assume you guys have to have to have had. Just you've heard the manager say, you've heard the town attorney say, so at this point without, we're going to wait for the information. Right, well, well, soon it'll be forthcoming. It'll become public knowledge as soon as I get it. Thanks. Anybody else to this or to this or its own? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close and move for final adoption. So, Second. Motion made and second to close and move for final adoption. Clerk, call roll. Council Member Cosgrove? Yes. Tanya? Yes. Grazio? Yes. Provel? Yes. Jim Lilburg? Yes. Mayor yes. Melman? Yes. Ordinance number three. Yeah. yeah. Ordinance number three for public hearing and ordinance amending chapter nine, section two of the codified ordinances of the township of Bellville entitled parking meters. Motion opens for public. Second. We have a motion made and second to open for public hearing. Uh, Clerk, call Council Member Casarelli. Yes. Tanya? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strumolo Burke? Yes. Mayor Melvin? Yes. Any questions about this ordinance and this ordinance only? Yes. Mr. Frantantoni. I would like to know what you're doing. Okay, so we have, uh, you, you heard the discussion we had earlier about the brand new meters. Those new meters now have credit card. Uh, we have an ordinance that states 25 cents per hour. Therefore, if you use a credit card, we get less money than that. 15 minutes. 15, 25, 15, 25, 25 cents, 15 minutes. Uh -huh. Therefore, we can't receive less money than that. So if you use a credit card, much like most government entities, that you have to pay the convenience fee or the surcharge for that. Th uh, 13 cents extra. Yeah. And the other thing with the meters, we, when are we going to put them from Great Lock North? All right, that's nothing to do with this ordinance. You can talk about that during public comment. Uh, anybody else for this ordinance? This ordinance only. Hearing none, we entertain a motion to close and move for final adoption. So, second. Okay. Uh, clerk, call roll. Councilmember Graziano. Yes. Depend you? Yes. I mean, Casarelli. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Count, let's sort over. Councilmember Casarelli. Yes. Depend you? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Roval? Yes. Schumelberg? Yes. Mayor Mel? Yes. Okay, you weren't on the table, so we we're leaving. Next on the agenda is public commenting. Any motion to open public commenting? So moved. We have a motion made and second to open public commenting. Clerk, call roll. Council Member Cosmarelli? Yes. Defendant? Yes. yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jim Lilburg? Yes. Mayor Mullen? Yes. Okay, Mr. Frank Anton. Phyllis Frank Anton and Mount Prospect Avenue. On Belleville Avenue, up by Hendricks Field, there is a tree that the branch is hanging over. Complained about it many times. Mm -hmm. I have contacted Joe, Joe DiVincenzo on it. The 27th, I sent him a letter and I sent an email to his secretary. Here's a copy of what I sent. Hopefully they'll fix it because that is a disaster waiting to happen. A tree. People that own a tree a couple of doors down from me had a branch hanging like that, and in a storm, I mean, this tree was, it went down, damaged a lot of stuff. That, that's I know really it, bad. I talked to our pre uh, county commissioner about it. I, all I could do is send emails. Right. Thank well, you. Well, I did that. email him three or four times, and hopefully he'll do something. And as my husband mentioned, meters down by Chuck Wright. Not at shop right before. Are they going to go up over there? They're all parked on the on the dirt on the sidewalk all over, and there are no meters there at all. And will they be going up eventually? Mr. Manager. Yes, that is definitely part of the uh, plan, and it's also part of the redevelopment, uh, which is going to be at that property lot. So there will be meters right up to the border. All right. Now yellow curves. Clear up field. The, when you go to the corner of Home Street and Union Avenue, it's not only the pedestrians that park their cars there, it's also the people that work for the Board of Ed. They park right up on the corner, and when you get to the corner, it's very hard to see. I mean, it's, they're parking illegally. They don't belong parking there. 
So I hope that you can put a yellow curb there so they don't park there because that's very bad. And another incident that happens, you have your crossing guards. You may have two or three at one corner and they're all standing together instead of on the separate corners where they have to cross the kids. They can't do that. Some of the intersections are very bad and they should be on their perspective corner across those kids and not standing there talking and on their cell phones and everything else. Is that during their shift? Yes, it's during their shift. They don't allow that while they're still Yeah, their by shift. the middle school and when there's two of them up on the Union Avenue too. And um, cars that are parked illegally all over. In fact, there's one on my block, been parked for two days across the sidewalk, the garage is up to the sidewalk, and he's been parked there, and you know where I'm talking about. It's the Thayer's old house. Okay. He can park wherever he wants. Nobody does nothing. He's there all the time. People have to walk around out in the street. Just you don't have to, to wait for council him. meeting, as I say all the time. You can call but everybody, the he's, my husband has told the chief about it and everything. When you see the infraction call, I mean, all I can do is advise residents when they see an infraction call to police department. Waiting two weeks to come to a council meeting. It's there. It was there today. Okay. It was there yesterday, and it was there the day before. That's rough. This is all the time. Okay. So I hope something can be done about it. Thank you. Anybody else? Public comment. Mark Gaines, 70 Washington Avenue. Sure. Thank you guys. Let me go before the heavy hitters get up. <laughs> it's quick, I'm on the receipt, so excuse me. Um, I'm glad the town manager are going to have the sweepers out. Maybe you can send some to Washington Avenue. That would be great, you know. And even with that, for the chief here, we actually have cars literally parking in front of the fire hydrants nighttime, daytime. They don't care. And we're on a dead end block. No one really comes down to enforce it. So if the chief's That's connection. Not That's not true. Okay, I'm sorry, chief. But they are parking just in front of fire hydrants. Every fire hydrant has a car parked in front of it. But as I said to Mrs. Franklin, Tony, I'd rather come to a meeting than with no, 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 no. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Uh, I understand. I, I just wanted to bring it up. You know, as, 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 I just told, as I just told Ms. Frantz, yeah, yeah, I understand exactly what you, yeah. Call, we can't do anything about no, it. No, no, no. I, I understand exactly what you're saying. And when you said you should bring it up, but I already had it written down, so I'm going to keep going with it. I'm, not going to stop. Um, I'm glad you like your Starbucks. Thank it you. is really nice. There's only one problem that right handed turn coming on the Franklin Ave. As we noted, people have already not even taken the right turn. Coming out, making a left turn. I don't think the right turn, I'm not a traffic guy, but I don't think the right turn sticks out enough so they can't make that left turn. And it's a really dangerous section because that's actually a whole curve that's turning onto Franklin Ave. So maybe you guys want to look at that or something. Um, the live stream that you guys do. I wish there was someone that could actually like monitor it because a lot of people do ask questions on there and you can see the comments of like, oh, well, why don't they look here so we can get our questions answered and stuff like that. So I just thought I'll bring the one to bring it up in case someone wants to look into that and get something done with that that it can actually monitor so you can see if they actually have questions on the live stream. There's no use of having it on if you're not going to address the residents' questions that can't get here. Well, I think it's more for residents that want to be informed what's going on if they have any pertinent issues. They can write an email, they can call, they can come to a council meeting. Well, some things are going live. Live, answering, talk live answering when I'm trying to conduct a meeting is something that's going to be a little difficult. Yeah, no, I understand. I just wanted to bring it up and see if that was any type of option that you can go through or something like that. May, may I? Sure, let, me, let them finish and then we'll... No, no, that's good. Go ahead. No, got to finish. Yeah. No, no, I'm done. I'm done. Go okay. ahead. Maybe if it, people hearing us or word of mouth gets out, maybe they can submit their questions beforehand and we can answer them. Uh, we do a lot of that. I don't know if we notice that way. Kelly, we don't notice that. Oh, you don't? Call in. Yes. Right? Well, call in. Well, they can call in while they're in the meeting. Absolutely. And they can talk in public. But a lot of them, like, I, even if I had a question, I don't know which number to call. You know, who am I calling? It's on the website. It's on the website? Yeah, I think it's, it's okay. notice. It's on the, I mean, notice. yeah, I mean, we, you, people do have to take a little bit of an effort to actually try. Yeah, and, you can't. I, I've looked on the website. I've never noticed it, so. Maybe if we can make it a little, like, highlight it a little bit or something, so they actually know, like, this is the number you can call, you know? 
I mean, if they're able to get onto a live stream, they should be able to find a phone number or an email address. I, I, I look for the phone yeah. number during the live stream, and it's not the easiest thing to find. It's right on the agenda. It's on okay. the agenda. Yeah. All right. We can actually put it on waiting. We can put it right on. On the thing? That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's literally on page one of the agenda, though. We'll put Anthony's phone number. Thank you. We're going to give you Anthony's cell phone number. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else in public comment? Mr. Frantantoni. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, you uh, asked Mr. Sheldon if he had any proof of illegal payments. Uh, I don't know if he does, but I have, and I got it from the town manager. I opened it when you guys, council people, passed a $1.9 million bond ordinance. When I asked for the details, I got the results from there. You paid illegal payments. Part of that 1.9 was another illegal thing, about $450,000 under a line item called incentives, which I'll be nice about it. I, maybe bribes would be more appropriate for that. Those were all illegal payments in the bond ordinance that you people voted on. That $1.9 million. There was another line for vacation payments. Vacation payments is not carried over. When I was wrote, I sent all employees the state statute, and I said no vacations are carried over, with one exception. If you want to carry for one year, you have to send me a letter saying what week you want to take, when you're going to use it, and the reason for that. Other than that, it's illegal to carry over and pay. You guys in that $1.9 million ordinance that you guys voted for paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in illegal vacation uh, payments. So if you wanted, you couldn't answer Mr. Sheldon, I asked you to go back and look at what you approved and paid out in that $1.9 million of our tax dollars to illegal vacation and uh, incentive payments that you paid out that were illegal. Uh, the other one, uh, not you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, Mr. Graziano and Depina, but the other four, well, minus Mr. Harry. I hope you're proud of what you did when you got rid of school number one. You, Mr. Ravel, Mr. Cagarelli, Ms. Burke, all right? First of all, not a Board of Education. I brought up at the time. The Board of Ed, for five years, could not answer me, provide a deed. Nobody could find a deed for school one because they're all looking for 190 Cortland Street. I was on jury duty. They adjourned us to 11 o'clock. I spent the rest of the day down there, and I found it. The reason I found all those deeds because it was under 81 Stephen Street. But there was four deeds. That property had four deeds. The one on the northwest corner, that deed, actually, the property goes across Cortland Street. So not a board of that. That was all illegal. Uh, Quick Check wants to come in. Uh, they have smart attorneys, and they found out that all that stuff that you guys approved, and you guys did, you know, all was illegal. So, what, you know, nobody ever gets punished for doing these stupid, illegal things. And you four who voted for that, number one, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. You, Mr. Ravel, you have family in the school system. Friend, you should just know. keep your comments to the Well, it, it, it's... I'm addressing the one. You weren't involved at that time. I don't know if it would have made any difference, but it, 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 it's a shame that nobody pays attention to what they're doing, and we, the taxpayers, suffer. So now that problem has been followed for like 10 years or more, and, you know, quick check quarter and all that. But when are we going to start paying attention to what you guys are voting on? You don't know what the hell you're doing, really, most of the time. And we, the taxpayers, are paying big time for it. Uh, the other thing is, last meeting, once again, you approved. And again, through the chair, you want me to go to through the chair, but Mr. Ravel voted no on the Cazzarelli, you know, a funeral home thing, which is not an area in the redevelopment. But Matthew Boxer, the state controller, in 2010 did a big article about the pitfalls uh, and problems of these pilot agreements and all. Uh, once, 
one of the articles, one of the sentences in there, that most of them, there's actually no reason to declare an area uh, blighted or in need of redevelopment. That Cogarelli funeral home is a perfect example of what the state control is putting here. There's no reason. Now, like all these things that are highlighted, these are all problems. Every one that you're committing, every one of these problems you're committing, these developers are overstating their expenses. They're co-mingling expenses from one project to another to, to make it look like their expenses are high. And then you guys are giving them the Matthew Boxer State Controller 2010. If any of you got the carriage to look at that and see how you how he says how bad these pilots and these tax abatements and this redevelopment Thank you, things Mr. are done. So wake up, and I hope you stop that. Thank you. The, the, uh, it need the redevelopment of a beautiful historic home. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening, and I'm starting my time card, my clock now, because I just clocked Mr. Frank Antoni and he's short of my 35 seconds. Not sure. Yes, it is. I'm clocking this. So you, my clock is wrong or your clock is you're wrong. Ready 10 minutes, okay? 10, you're ready so, 10 seconds. And my time starts not from the seat. It's time to get here. Start speaking. Because on the back here, I'm going to clock myself. It says I have five minutes. Not four minutes and 20 seconds. Four minutes and 35 doing, seconds left. You have been doing that in the last several meetings. Go back on your own videos and I've been shorted. And I, in the course of years, you have shorted me hours probably. At the last town meetings, you gave me four minutes and 20 seconds. And, that, and then you were telling me I can't speak anymore. Well, you're out of order, number one. All right, Four minutes on. I'm clocking myself. I don't need you to clock it. You better check your clock. Something's not ticking right there. Okay, uh, the bill list. Why isn't the bill list up there? The bill list should be on the town for the us public to review it. And the manager is responsible for that because township ordinance says, or state statute says, the manager shall oversee all departments. If the manager doesn't give it to the employees, the employees can't do their job. So Mr. Manager, state statute, check it out, because I did. And it says, you shall oversee Mr. Jones, all Robert's Rules of Order says you address the chair. Yeah. Do you want to set, cite laws? Okay. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Curve training. I'm glad somebody finally listened to me after about two years of complaining about the... Uh, illegal parking. And I'll tell you what, it's not only illegal parking, I've already witnessed people putting cones in front of their house for parking. So that's only the beginning. We've got 319, 318 to go. All right, number four. What is resolution, uh, when I sit down, just answer resolution number five as to what they are doing. And going back to your comments about street cleaning and calling in for tickets, well, I called in, as a matter of fact, I sent the manager an email. I called into the police department, left a message for street cleaning. Street cleaning is 7.30 to 11.30. I called in at 9.30 to say the car is still there and no tickets. The car finally left. So these cars sit around for hours and they play Russian roulette whether they're going to get a ticket or not. So why are you telling us to call in when we do call in and you don't ticket them? Chief is right there. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure he noted your complaint about his department. Yeah. Well, it's in. It's recorded. And answer number five for me, because you, I notice every time I sit down, you never finish answering me. So answer number five. I usually to answer you, and you always interrupt me. So that's no, three seventy one. You're, 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 you're interrupting me now. Three seventy one. Interrupting me. Sure. You're just so rude and arrogant that you constantly interrupt people. That's because of your hatefulness towards certain people here. Anybody else for public comment? Uh, number five, you didn't answer it. I answered it, you were too busy complaining no, about it. I still got time. Mr. Sheldon. Sure. Mr. Sheldon. I got time. Mr. Sheldon. Uh, and Mr. Attorney, he was violating my rights. You, you, okay you, you. you sat down, you were done. Yeah. Mr. Sheldon, I gave you the answer six times, you were too busy yeah. talking over me. Good evening, Michael Sheldon. Once again, Mr. Mallory, as I pointed out publicly by looking at all previous videos, the three people in particular, Mr. Frantantoni, Mr. Crows, and myself, you start the clock when you call upon us, not when we start speaking. We're supposed to have five minutes before this microphone. And the clock goes off early, and then I ask people, like I said, so to everybody else, please wrap up. At this point on, I will be keeping my own clock. 
Okay. As well. Okay. Uh, You're already 35 seconds in. No, I'm 10 seconds in. I'm sorry. Uh, you mentioned uh, during the conference section that you're making an effort to limit ATV activity on our streets. Interestingly enough, on my way to the council meeting tonight at, at 5.45 p.m., there was an entire gang of ATVs moving southbound on Washington Avenue. I don't know if anyone else here saw them. You did. You saw, you I heard. saw them. I heard. Right. It sounded like a drag strip. I literally they discussed did. it in my mayor's report. Well, the, the lead guy... These were big, pretty large three-wheel vehicles as well. The lead guy was doing wheelies down most of Washington Avenue. Uh, I have to have a, a video camera in my car. I caught all of it. And with our chief here, if he would be interested, I will send him the, the video. I also assume since they went... But most significantly, let me point this out. When they got to Rutgers and Washington Avenue, even though there was a red light, they bullied their way through the intersection almost causing an accident with a, a car that was making a turn mm -hmm. off of Rutgers Street southbound onto Washington. So you had clearly this group engaged in reckless behavior. And if the chief wants the video, if he doesn't have video already in place on Washington Avenue, I will supply this to him. I've already, over the last few years, I've given the Bell Police Department lots of video. Most recently, um, almost in front of my house, I found on a Sunday morning, four large bricks, which were either cocaine or fentanyl. Now, some of the members of the police department told me that, well, they did some testing, it may have been sugar, but it's hard to believe since every day for the next five days, detectives... Can, 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 can I just stop you for one time? I mean, it's kind of disparaging to the township for you to go on social media and come here and I, say I have you lots found of cocaine when police labs didn't indicate there was cocaine or fentanyl was Well, it's, it's interesting that you a lot, a, lot of interest, a lot of interest on the part of, of, of four detectives to, to visit my house almost every day for the next several days asking me for any available video. They went to all of the neighbors. They went down Floyd Street, Malone, Tapan, Division. They told me looking for any homeowners with other video. A hell of a lot of interest in powdered sugar, right? But let that be what it may. It may. Uh, the, uh, if I understood Ms. Kavanaugh, uh, she kind of whispered that the bills list now are being included in the online agenda packets. So yes. that's 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 yes. now all right. I'm yes. glad. I'm glad that's ha that's happened at long last. Uh, if you're going to make the effort to enforce parking rules, you should use the township website to periodically remind residents of the state laws that you can't park within 50 feet of a stop sign, you can't park within 25 feet of a crosswalk or intersection, and you can't park within 10 feet of a fire hydrant. 10 feet, I believe. But, but anyway, I'm right, Michael, 10. It's 10 feet. If, you, if we were to drive, go around tonight, I'd take you up on this challenge. I bet you would find easily 100 violations of these three laws as, we, as I speak right now. The Sheldon, I don't know why you were here at the beginning of the meeting when I sat here and said to you that I've driven the chief around to see the yellow curve. You're, you're telling us stuff that we already discussed. You know, this I very know meeting. But why, why aren't these laws? And the chief's course. getting beat up today, and I'm not sure he deserves really it all, but it seems like every single person's picking on his department. I'm not trying today. to beat him up. It's just that there's, there's for some reason, a blind eye is being turned to all of these parking violations, which are endangering. Public safety. It was literally my discussion item today, this meeting. Right. Well, you have a key position here. You need to use your collective just power today, to make sure that ago. all of these parking rules are enforced. And I, I will speculate here. The reason why this isn't done is because if this town hall were to suddenly start enforcing these parking rules, there would be such an overwhelming backlash. There would be hundreds of residents screaming at you collectively. Where in the hell do we park? If we can't park within, you know, uh, never mind 50 feet. I do need to wrap up, Mr. Well, but this this is outrageous because you the the, the, lack, the fact that these parking rules are not being enforced endangers those of us who I are. I have no riding. enforcement power. This governing body has no enforcement power. The town manager doesn't have enforcement power. But we did discuss it. I said during my discussion to uh, that I've mentioned this before to the chief. The chief is well aware of it. I mean, you can use your time to talk about it, that's fine, but your time is up. And now I do have to ask you to wrap up. From this point on, every speaker gets five minutes Wonderful. before this Thank microphone. They not, all not transit. Anybody else who's done your past your five minutes? In the back.
Bill Millen, 16 Humboldt Street. I have one question here. Are any of our council members taking municipal health benefits? Yes. Sure. Who are they? I am. I am. Yeah. I think every single person up here is. No. No. You want to take eyeglasses or dental work? Yes. Oh. Yeah, we all, we all get Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening, Carl. Flash Man 33 Main Street. At the last meeting, I spoke to the attorney, or excuse me, the manager in regards to the mess on Route, Main Street, Route 21. Have you heard any kind of feedback yet? Yes. Uh, myself, the manager, I believe Councilman Cazzarelli, Maybe they didn't know. Uh, we're on a conference call with our friend Meredith, and it was brought up to her again during that conference call by myself and the manager. Right, and what? She's going to notify me. This was the response we got. Okay, that's number one. Number two. Unfortunately, it does sound like the police department is getting beat up tonight, and that's wrong because they're the ones that are on the front line. They're the ones that are putting their lives on the line for all of us. So I applaud the police and the chief and everyone who protects us. So that's, you know, number two. Thank you, Carl. You're welcome. Uh, number three, I have such a bone to pick with whoever is responsible for Anthony, putting... Tell me. No. <laughs> Let me finish. Because I have a feeling I'm going to be yelling at somebody about the lovely yard sales this past weekend. I understand that they were deferred because of the rain. Fabulous. Now, I was told that the principal PDF file should have been available by 3 p.m. on Friday, the day before the sales. I could not find it. I know you and I had a little banter back on Facebook about I it. clearly told you where it was right. on the website. I, let me finish. Okay. It wasn't up by the time it was promised. It was promised at 3 p.m. on Friday. Who, just so I'm curious, who would have made that promise of 3 p.m.? The young lady who I spoke to about. Because um, it, it was on social media. It was it was out there by right the end of the day. But what, uh, by the end of the day, uh -huh. that's not 3 p.m. If if we're gonna if we're gonna go nitpick for nitpick, you really shouldn't. But we shouldn't. But I'm going it was to. all over township social media, it was all over my social media. Right. It was on the town website. Right, but not at the allotted time. Gotcha. That's number one. Number two, I found it very difficult at first to click onto that link. After you and I had our little banter back on Facebook, it was principal. I was already out and about doing other things, but again, if you're going to, and again, I don't know who officially ran it, so I don't know who to, you know, certainly not blame. It's a yard sale, for God's sakes. Fifty lashes, Mr. Martin, uh, Mr. Icon. Yeah, I was going to say, we're not going to blame whoever did it. But, again, like I said, if you're going to say something, stick to that work. So what we did say was going to be published in the paper, and we did that. What we did say was going to be published all over social media, and we did that. What we did say was it was going to be on the website, and it was, maybe it was an hour or so late. Apologies. Maybe a couple more hours than that, but again, that's fine. Lastly, I do think that the food truck rally was a great success. Um, you owe me a cleaning bill because of the wood, because I, I came home smelling like, you know, like a fire, but so I'm going to send you a cleaning bill for my sweatshirt. Thank you. I hear you. I just washed my clothing as well. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Public comment. Hearing none, seeing none. Any motion to close public hearing? So moved. Second. We have a motion made and second to close public comment and clerk call the roll. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Tapena? Yes. Brazio? Yes. Rogel? Yes. Truman Lober? Yes. Mayor Melvin? Yes. Uh, consent agenda? I'll give it. Yeah, me too. Nope. Need a motion to move the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Oh, time out. Can we check the. Oh, hold oh, on. See if there's anybody on it. Oh. Anybody in phone land? Is there anyone there? Yes, I am. Hello? Anyone there? No. Is that even on the phone? Yes, yes. it is. It is on. It's connected. 
Need a motion to move consent agenda. Yeah. So moved. Need a motion made to move consent agenda. Clerk, clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli? Yes. Dependent? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Provel? Yes. Trimble Yes. Yes. New business. Hearing none, seeing none. Unfortunately, boys and girls of the council, we are not done. Uh, we have executive session. So I'm going to, in a second, entertain a motion to go into executive session. We are going into executive session to discuss potential litigation. Township attorney put that on. And contract negotiations, township attorney put that on. Unfortunately, I do have to clear the room. I can guarantee you that no action will be taken while we're in executive session. I can also guarantee you that when executive session is over, the only action we will take is to adjourn the meeting and not take any additional action. Uh, that said, you're more than willing to wait on the outside until it's done to be here to adjourn the meeting. But I do have to uh, ask you all to vacate the room. Thank you.